is Tommy Ocean from Amorphis and you are watching Impact Channel. Here we are with Tommy from Amorphis. Oh. Hi and welcome to Budapest. How are you and how's the tour going so far? Well, we've been on tour now uh, about two weeks and so far it's been fantastic. Lots of uh, sold out shows and uh, I think the package is really interesting for great bands. And, and uh, we are sharing the bus with Soilwork guys, so and it's, it's been crazy in a good way. It's, it's, it's been really nice and, and so far everything's been just perfect. So it's a quite a busy year, I mean 2019 for you because you'll be on tour pretty much mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. Um, and you have done this quite a while already, so how do you unwind on tour? How do you relax when, uh, when you have such a tight schedule? Well, I don't know if there is like a, a, any proper way to relax. I think everyone is just trying to survive every day <laughs> in a way. And um, if you mean, if, if you if think like we have, we have to work only like uh, an hour and a half in a day. If you think about working, like the, the playing the show is work for us. So of course we have lots of spare time. And um, but for me, for me personally, uh, I'm trying to take a walk around the cities. Sometimes the venues are really in the center of the city, so it's it's really easy to just go outside and take a walk. And, and, sightseeing and, and, and see the local restaurants and stuff like this and uh, I also have some uh, sports stuff with me I'm, I'm trying to do something you know to, just to keep myself fit and, and uh, just to keep myself in some kind of level that I can I, I'm able to do the shows every night and uh, sometimes we find a gym and we go there and uh, I think it's really important that for me personally that I'm, I'm trying to keep myself active during the days because if I just hang around in a, in a venue and, and stare at my phone, it's uh, after a couple of days you feel like brain dead. So this works for me that I'm, I'm trying to be active. And when you are not uh, on tour and you're not busy with the Morphis, do you do any kind of sports? Yeah, some, some, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Because I'm 40, I'm gonna be 44 this year, so I have to realize the facts that uh, I, I try to. I have to be in shape <laughs> just to do the shows, you know. So, what do you think? Where is your strongest fan base, or is there any kind of uh, difference that you would notice? Well, I, I think the Germany area is the strongest, mm -hmm. and of course Finland. Yeah. And uh, but it, Europe in general is is maybe the biggest. Um, because the, all the best venues, venues in, for us in, in Europe. And um, we have played now a couple times in, in States. We, we had a break there, like, I think there was like an eight years gap or something that we did play there. But now, now we have done a couple of tours there also, and it's, it's getting very better also there. But uh, I think the biggest fan base is in, in Europe. And, uh, but we are really open minded when it comes to the places we're going to play. And, and, we have played also in Australia and of course mm -hmm. Japan and China and, and now we're going to have a two weeks tour uh, in Russia too. Mm -hmm. So we haven't played in Africa I think but uh, it would be nice to go there also. Yeah that's what I wanted to ask you, yeah. where was the place you would want to go? So well we got a couple of offers from South Africa and mm -hmm. we were really ready to go there but then something happened. We are, just to make it sure that we would like to go everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. And if we are not going somewhere, it's it's not because of us. It's about the uh, about the venues or promotion or something like this. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, if you put something out from Facebook that we are going to have a tour in, uh, for example, in uh, let's say in Japan, there's someone complaining, why didn't you come to Brazil? Oh. And it's it's always like <laughs> we would like to go everywhere, but it's it just not like that. We decide, okay, now we're gonna go to Chile to play a show. It's it's not that. This is like a business thing, and uh, there has to be some someone who wants to want, wants us to come there, and uh, that's how it works. 
logistic-wise and visas. And yeah, like there has to be a lot of manager and there has to be a venue and there has to be a promoter and you have to know the right people. There is no reason just to go there and do the show. It's, you know, it's not going to happen. Okay, anyway, good luck and I hope you get to every country. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, you've been with Amorphis for like 14 years already. Yeah, something like this, yeah. Um, has there been any, like, um, a biggest highlight that you could mention during well, this time? I think this latest album, I think it's it's been kind of a biggest highlight in a way. Of course, mm -hmm. the first show that I played with Amorphis was a big moment and, and, and the first record we did, Eclipse, it was a big thing and the first tours in Europe and, and, and uh, states, but uh, I think with this album we have made some success, like really, for, for example this tour there's been like, I don't know how many sold out shows already, yeah, and uh, it's not the first time, but, uh, but this, this time, I mean in Finland for example we played in a bigger venues and, and there was lots of sold out shows there also, so I think something something really could happen with this album. I can feel that there's some kind of a hype, if you can call it that. Well, it's the 13th Amorphous well, studio maybe that's album, so... Yeah, 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 I don't know. But uh, it's not like a huge success, but uh, I can feel... I've been, as you said, like 14 years and, and, and now I feel that something big might happen in the near next future. Are you superstitious, by the way? Well, not... Like in, in in a big way, but of course, if you see a black cat, it's not not neutral. <laughs> yeah, so maybe the thirteen brings you luck then. Well, Hopefully. let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what were you like as a kid? I was pretty much into sports in, mm -hmm. in, in that time of my life. I, I was really into football. I played football a lot, and uh, I stopped it when I was like twenty-five or something like this. And, uh, but it wasn't that serious anymore in that time. But uh, uh, before the teenager ages, I, I played football, but uh, I started to listen to music uh, more seriously when I was like 13 or 14. And, and, and then I started to play drums also in the bands. And uh, then the football thing, I left it a little bit back behind. But uh, I used to have lots of friends, and uh, I've lived all my life in the same city. So my friend still lives there, so I was quite social guy in that way that I had lots of friends and I, I liked, liked to spend time outside during the winters. I did lots of uh, uh, ice skating, like, uh, hockey and stuff like this, ice hockey. And during the summer we played lots of football and went to swimming, swim to the lakes because we have lots of lakes and, and a beautiful lake in, in my home city. But uh, I started to play music when I was like 14 or something, and uh, so I don't have any education for music, but uh, I just started to do that. So you trained yourself completely by yourself? Well, not by myself, with my friends. Hmm. Great. I don't know, it's great, but so, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> And what, what were the bands that got you away from football and on the path of Well, I think it was Metallica. When I was a kid, I listened to uh, this 80s heavy rock like Kiss and Wasp and, and Twisted Sister, stuff like this, Iron Maiden. But uh, when I started to listen to Metallica, when I was, I think I was in seventh grade or something like this, mm -hmm. and the first album was, for me, it was Unjustice for All. And uh, then I realized that this is the great music and, and this is the this is my thing. Mm -hmm. And what was the first ever album that you got? Was it just uh, Injustice for All? Or you mean what I bought or what I got? Uh, whatever you had. Okay. I think the first album that I got as a present was uh, Asylum from Kiss. Mm -hmm. And what was the, the very first gig you went to? Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. And as a musician, what was your first gig like? Uh, I think we played in, in school, there was some kind of celebration thing, I think, I think we played, I think we played like Final Countdown from, from Europe or something like this, like really cheesy stuff from the 80s, and some Finnish slugger kind of songs, but it was just uh, kids fun, 
that time. I used to go a lot in gigs when I was like eight, 18, 19. There was this one legendary venue in Finland called Lepa, which, which means like a bat cave. And it was in, in Helsinki. They had lots of uh, underground metal bands played there. I saw my Napalm Death then and Into That Grave and, and My Dark Ride and that like that. And also Amorphis. I saw them played there back in the days. But uh, I live like one hour drive from Helsinki and uh, I, I didn't have money or guts to go to the big city to see the shows when I was younger. And what is it nowadays that you listen to? Uh, well, I'm trying to be open-minded. I, I listen not all kind of music, but not only metal. But mm -hmm. but uh, it seems to be it's mostly metal when I check out my my, for example, uh, playlists, some punk music also, and uh, that's about it. Okay, so on this latest album, um, there is a song when, uh, where Anneke sings, mm. like among stars. Yeah. Is there uh, anyone else you would really like to work with? Anyone on your bucket list? Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Not really. Uh, I would like to do like uh, side projects or something like this, but uh, well, it would be nice to play something with. Uh, some Swedish death metal bands like Grave or Into or something like this with those guys. Yeah, I hope it will happen one day. <laughs> it will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And if um, somebody would uh, do a tribute to Amorphis, who would be the band or the, the artist you would like to hear to cover an Amorphis song? Massive attack. Okay, you mentioned that you would like to um, do something with these bands like Entombed, but mm. um, musically, like uh, I don't mean a band now. Like, uh, would you like to try any anything else um, music-wise, like a new instrument or? Well, something? I'm doing all, all kind of stuff, like really small things in my home home city. I, I I have a couple other side projects. I play guitar in one band and also drums in a couple of bands, and, and I sing in a one cover band and I even perform for a couple of times for rap songs. Wow. Yeah. And that just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. But still it's it's good to have fun with music. It's not that serious thing. So it's kind of a hobby as well, not only. Of course, yeah. And uh, it's nice to realize that I still have the passion for that after after many years touring and I'm playing around. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I, I think there might be some people who come home from tour and they don't want to listen to anything or see any instruments or anything like this, but that's that's not the thing in my case. Uh, I just love doing this. That's good to hear. Yeah. And I guess um, the fact that you are doing uh, so many things, like not only singing, helps as well because you yeah. it's kind of versatile. Yeah, it is, it's 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 great that I'm not really good with guitar or drums, but but still I can play those instruments and it's it's really nice. And uh, I think it also helps to understand other guys in the band. Of course, as a singer, it's a big challenge to have these long tours and, and uh, play like six shows in a row without. Uh, day offs. But uh, of course everyone has their own problems and challenges during the tours and, and uh, it's not easy to hear anyone. How do you train your voice by the way before the shows? Well, I just try to take it easy. I do some uh, really, really simple exercises and uh, just try to concentrate everything and uh, I think it's quite mental to go on stage. You have to be relaxed and, and you have to have some kind of... You have to trust yourself when you go on stage, so to speak. And uh, I have some routines and uh, after I have done my routines I'm really ready and pumped up for the stage, so that's my thing. But uh, when I'm home I'm not trained at all. I'm just trying to forget everything and <laughs> try to do other things.
<laughs> okay. So, uh, if you would not be a musician, how would you express yourself? I don't know. I suck. If I, if I, if I try to... I would like to know how to draw or paint. That would be really awesome because I see myself as a little bit like a visual guy, but I, I don't have the tools to express myself in that way. But uh, before Amorphis, I used to work with uh, kids. I was a youth leader or a youth worker or something like this, and uh, that was also a really nice way to do interesting things and, uh, and, and some good things at the same time. So what would be your dream gig like if you would not have to consider logistics, uh, money, anything? If, if all your officials would, would be able to... Well, it's, it's really difficult to say because sometimes you think this, this is the best gig ever, you know. You go, for example, you play a show with Iron Maiden. We opened for Iron Maiden in, in, in Helsinki, in Olympic Stadium. And, uh, it's, you know, if you just think about that, that feels like, what the hell, this is the greatest thing on earth. But, uh, we played a show a day after, a day before that, and uh, we came there by train from some really small city, and we didn't get any sleep during the night, and we were really, really, really tired, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's just imag imagination. When, when you really got there, you realize that this is just another show in a way. It feels really bit boring and stupid, but that's, that's how it is. I would say that I would like to play in some really cool club somewhere, for example, the States, and, and, and uh, would be nice to have some... Uh, would be nice to open for Mastodon, for example, or for Slayer or something like this. But when you got there, you realize that this, this is just the same thing. You have the same songs and uh, the same people around, you know. It's a boring answer, but that's my <laughs> no, opinion not. about that. <laughs> okay. So, if you could summon a mythological creature or a historical person for a chat, who would it be your choice? Ah, oh, that's a tough one. Well, it would be nice to talk with Hitler. Uh -huh. And what would you ask him? I would ask, what's the fucking wrong with you, guy? <laughs> I, I would try to speak with him and say that this is really stupid what you're doing. And if there would be one thing that you could eliminate from the world, what would be your choice? Eliminate? Yeah. Oh man, human. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it seems that we are destroying the planet, so for the planet it would be great, but um, I don't know. There is so many things wrong in the world nowadays, it's really difficult to pick just one, but uh, let's say plastic. Okay. It's a good one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you have a few tattoos. Do you have a favorite one, or is there one which means a lot to you? Which one? Tattoos. Tattoos? Yeah. No, they're just pictures. Okay. Yeah. So you're not uh, a symbolic person? Well, I guess I am, but uh, I don't have any favorite one. Uh, what do you believe in? Uh, I have to believe myself, of course. And uh, I don't know, that's the only thing you can trust. Mm -hmm. What are your five favorite albums of all times? Uh, at this moment, I would say Metonine from Massive Attack and uh, Harmony Corruption from Nabon Death. Uh, clandestine from Entombed, Soulless from Grave, and uh, Dancing Number Four. Thank you. And do you have a message to the fans? No. Okay. <laughs> so that was it from me then? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best for the game. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. very much.